Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. We just took leftover homemade smoked pastrami and made a bubble and squeak with it. If you guys want to see how we do it, here we go. All right, to get started, we're just looking at some simple ingredients here. We got about a half onion, two potatoes. You can see I just kind of roughly peeled them, kept the skins on because I like the skins, a quart of a cabbage and some carrot. Probably could get away with one carrot, but I like carrots. Maybe I'll just cut this and just eat this separate. The deal is bubble and squeak. It seems like there's a lot of different variations out there. It really just comes down to leftovers. Mashed potato being your main, or the potato being your main ingredient, typically about 50%. And then your other vegetables go in there. One thing that's uh, not in here is greens. Um, typically when you're doing this, it's like, you know, your boiled or roasted style vegetables that are left over. I think it's gonna be absolutely fantastic with that smoked pastrami. So let's see how we knock it out. I'm just gonna do a rough chop on these vegetables. Right here, I've got a half cup of water. Uh, one tablespoon of butter and some chicken bouillon in there. So just put that in the bottom of the pan. That's going to be our moisture. And then basically we're just going to do like a small dice on the onion. Kind of sprinkle that on the bottom. We're going to try to mirror that size. So I'm just breaking down the carrot to be able to reproduce that size. The cabbage the same way. We're gonna go a little bit smaller than normal. Basically what we're doing, since we smoked our pastrami and we didn't braise it in anything, no vegetables, nothing like that, no root vegetables, then we're basically creating what would be considered leftovers. So the potato, kind of the same thing. This is basically, Want to be your mash so it's not truly important but you do want to cut it in enough size to where it doesn't take forever so and a nice pinch of pepper and salt just a little bit of aluminum foil Keep some of that moisture trapped in. And then I was gonna poke some holes in it. In the oven it goes about 375 until the potatoes are extremely pork tender. So we can make the mashed potatoes out of that. All right, it's been about an hour. Uh, this is what the vegetables should look like. Honestly, I thought there might've been a little bit more moisture left in the bottom of the pan. Um, I was surprised to see it this dry, but it actually might work out better for us. I thought the cabbage would release some of the moisture as well. But here's our roasted vegetables, plenty of flavor. Potatoes are soft. So we're just gonna add that to the pan. And to this, we're just gonna mash it up. Kind of keep it rough a little bit. Not necessarily looking for a completely smooth. Remember, we've already salt and peppered. We can always go back in and taste if we need to. I know it smelled good in the in the house while I was cooking, but you wouldn't expect it to smell or taste that good. Just the way it is. It's interesting. All right. It, it smelled, you know what it smelled like in the house? It literally, it just smelled like corned beef and cabbage. And no cab, corned beef was going on. I know. <laughs> You're right. All right, so we got that. We set that to the side real quick. All right, we have some of that leftover smoked pastrami. It might not be traditional, but I'm putting it in there. You can serve it on the side or you can put it inside of it. We're going to dice it up and put it inside of it. I just think it sounds like it's right up my alley. This is what I'd want to eat, so this is how I'm going to make it. Remember, if you want this recipe for the homemade smoked pastrami, it will be on our website, Pellets and Pits. Kind of looking at the same idea for the bite size. I'm going to keep the fatty parts on there just because, once again, we liked it. All right, to the griddle it goes, and we're just gonna warm it up just a little bit, get those fats going. All righty, once that pastrami's warm through. We always preach clean as you go. Just mix that in there. Alrighty, we're about a medium heat on the Traeger. 
on this side, low on this side. And I'm looking about a half a tablespoon per patty. Seems like a lot, but I want to give us great color and flavor and texture. Take that mix and really mash it in there. We use these ring molds for way more stuff than just eggs. We've done hash brown casserole with them. We've done crab cakes with them. We portion out our burgers with them. Anytime you can get something that's basically uniform shaped, it really helps the griddling process because each one cooks pretty much even and you're not having to worry about guessing and one being too big, one being too little. Hear that squeaking? Did you hear that? Yep. It's bubble and squeak. That was crazy. Man, I'm gonna tell you what, the filling itself is fantastic. So you know it's gonna be good. Cooking all that butter. Little crispy brown bits on the bottom. All right, right before we turn it, we're gonna add a little bit more butter. Remember, if the bottom side gets it, the top side should get it. You probably don't need as much. As you can see, there's a lot of butter on the griddle. See that crispy bits on the bottom? Right at the end. Throw some eggs down. Get those with a little salt and pepper. I just turned my grill off. You can see how much is left to go, but there's gonna be a lot of residual heat. Alrighty, when it's all said and done, you know, obviously you can have your eggs your way. Throw a little parcel in there for color, that way you can say I can eat healthy today. And there you go. That is a bubble and squeak. We actually, we actually had a chance to hear it squeak. Little eggs, I think it's gonna be fantastic. Got a little crispiness on the edges. Look at that egg right there. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Here. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes very similar to hash. It is a hash, just prepared a different way. Different vegetables, but I'll tell you what it does. The cabbage almost brings a peppery sweet note. The carrots bring a sweet note. And it does change the flavor profile of a hash that we would make, where the hash browns are crispy, or the potatoes are crispy, and then you throw in your vegetables. The carrot and the cabbage are key. I don't, obviously I've never had authentic style, traditional, um, whatever this is called, bubble and squeak. <laughs> but if it's, it's good. But if it's as good as this, then I can see why people make it. It is super good. For some, it might sound crazy, but we've always looked for great ideas to use leftovers. This is one of them. But all in honesty, I think I would actually roast the vegetables the way I did for a little bit more intense flavor instead of using bold leftovers just to make this dish. Because I think all the little nuances help the dish become more flavorful. You understand? That, yep. Yeah. I agree. It is really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. But if you have leftover like corned beef and cabbage, this would be a great thing to try. Yeah, hey, if you're out on vegetables, roast your vegetables off, do whatever. But yeah, it's definitely worth making. It's really good. Perfect griddle recipe. That's what it's all about. Hit that join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. You can check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook. We talk about griddles where as long as the year goes on, we get inspiration because fun things like this pop up throughout the year for different holidays, for different occasions. And we love being creative on the griddle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share with your friends. Peace. Mm. Take it inside, it's cold. Look at that crunchy part right there. That's what makes it. I know, it is super good. Mm.